peace, your love, your joy. Father, we know that, Lord God, that you care so much for us. Yes, Lord. Lord, as a father, as Abba, yes. as the one, Lord Abba. God, who created each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. Father, for a plan and for a purpose. Father, we thank you, Lord, that today, Lord God, that we stand here before an awesome God. An awesome God who can take something so small as loaves and fishes and make it into multitudes to feed so many people. Lord, you can do amazing things. Yes. Father, we ask you, Lord, that today, Lord, you would continue, Lord, to open up our minds, open up our hearts, open up our understanding. Lord God, so that we may see you in all your glory and all your power, Lord, because, Lord, you've given that to us. And, Father, today I ask you, Lord, that you would hide this vessel behind the cross so that, Lord God, the things that you have placed inside of my heart to share, Father, may it be anointed by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you to lead me and guide me yes, in all Father, truth. Yes, yes, Father. And, Father, most of all, Lord God, Father, may it be receptive. Lord God, may we take it and plant it in good soil so that, Father, we may grow into the greater maturity of being like Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. 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 Happy Father's Day to all the men. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, we're continuing. Amen. We're continuing along with what? Probably eight weeks now, I guess. Nine weeks. Uh, we talked last week, we talked about the riches of his glory. And so many times we can, remember you think about this, the riches in his glory or riches in glory. And we always think, oh, well, these are going to be the riches when we get to heaven. No, they're the glory today. Amen. Each and every one of us today. What's available to us because the glory, as we talked about before, back there in the Garden of Eden, they had the glory of the Lord. And they were talking with him face to face. You could see him face to face. Sin. The glory was gone until the day of Pentecost. And on that day of Pentecost, it was restored. For those that trust and believe in Jesus Christ, he then imparts in us that glory. The Holy Spirit who lives, in, and who lives within us. Amen? Amen. So uh, I want you to turn over to, um, I know in the bulletin it says John 10. Um, we're deviating away from that for a little bit today. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, I think one of the things that is very, very interesting is we know that Jesus did a tremendous amount of miracles. We read it in the Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We see it throughout the scriptures. We even see some even in the book of Luke, the, the, or in Acts. Um, but it's amazing, but if we go over to John chapter 21 and verse 25, and I wanted to just touch on this just a, a little bit this morning as a, as a foundation of where we're going. And it says, the Bible says that there are also many other things that Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Now, I don't even think we can even imagine that. I mean, this used to be a library, amen? Yeah. And we had, I think, at one time, the, the, the library had almost 60,000 books. But the, but the Bible says that the world could not even contain the books of the things that he's done. Amen. <laughs> That the Library of Congress, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures. I mean, there's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of books. And that doesn't even compare to the things that Jesus has done. Amen. So I think one of the things that we have to come to an understanding is we're talking about the Father. We're talking about the Son, Jesus. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been our focus over the past maybe eight weeks, and we've been talking about that with Pentecost, and we're going to continue because I think we got to understand that. So how could he do all of those things? How could he do it? Because he's God. 
Who? What? He's God. Because he's God. Okay. That's not really the... That, that's close. That's close. How could he do it? How could he do it? He was divine, yet human. So in his humanology, if that, that's a word, in his, in his human sense, <laughs> the bottom line ends up being is, that's a whole, that's, that's like us. That's like you and I. And in his divine state, he had the glory of God. Now, as far as I see in the day of Pentecost, that day when that, that he breathed on them and he saw the Holy Spirit was there, and the thing that ends up being is now that glory is available to each and every one of us. We're human, just like Jesus was, and now we can have that divine nature inside of it, just like Jesus did. So think of that. Just hold on to that for a moment. But Jesus had something. He had the Holy Spirit without limit. Without limit. He had the Holy Spirit without limit. In Luke 4, chapter 14, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region around about. So he returned. He came back to Galilee. Remember, he went into the wilderness. When he went to the wilderness, he was tempted. First of all, he was led by the Spirit. Now, I want you to see this. Here is Jesus the Son of God, all man, yet all divine, and he is led by the Spirit to go out into the wilderness. Yeah. Amen? Amen? How many of us have ever been in the wilderness? Amen. How many times do you know that maybe the Holy Spirit led you there? Amen. Led you there because there was something that maybe you needed to learn. There was something that was deep down inside, has to understand Remember, he's now fasting for 40 days. He hasn't had a bit of bite to eat. He hasn't had anything. And now he's starving. And guess what? Knocks on the door of his mind and shows up. Hey, listen, if you're God, why don't you just take those stones and make it into bread and grab something to eat? Amen? Amen. How many times do you know that when you're in the wilderness, that's when it seems the enemy is the worst? Amen. When you're tired. When you're sick. Yes. Amen. When you're feeling sick, you're feeling down, you just feel disgruntled, you feel everything. I know it's been it's been over these past week or not. Continue to pray for my mom. My mom's home. Uh, she was having some excruciating pain in her in her hip. And uh, they went and did an x-ray and found out she got bone on bone. There's no muscle, there's no nothing there, and there's really nothing they can do. She's going to have to bear it. Um, and uh, so it, it's amazing because all week, the whole thing was I would go into the room, into her, because I would go in there in the morning, and my brother would go in the e evening, and she's just, Bob, get up. Get her into the room. She starts to shuffle along. She washes. Took her outside. She says, "I feel like a new woman." Amen. I said, "Mom, it's a battle of mine. Amen. It's a battle of mine." Not saying that you don't have pain, because I'm Amen. sure you probably do. Because I have a I have a left knee that's bone on bone. I don't have a medial meniscus. But the bottom line ends up being is it's all a battle of a mind. The mind, the mind, the mind. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I want you to think about this today. Is it possible to survive without Wi-Fi? <laughs> think about it. Today, it, it's a whole nother world. Is it, is, it, is it, can we survive without Wi-Fi? It connects us through messages, it connects us through emails and social media. You can go to Google, you get all the information you need. You can go to Wikipedia and get everything you need. We need Wi-Fi, we need it. We need it, we need it. It's something that's so, so, so important. It's almost like air conditioning and electric now today. Wi-Fi. First going to a place, you know, hey, do you have Wi-Fi? 
you know, because I want to be able to be able to get on my phone and get on and do things that I need to do. Well, the Holy Spirit was Jesus' connection to the power source. The Holy Spirit was Wi-Fi for Jesus. At that particular point in time, you understand that Jesus could do nothing, absolutely nothing. See, you can't get on your phone, you can't watch television, you can't do anything today unless you have internet or Wi-Fi. Except if you go to CTFTD, we have an antenna today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 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 a little, little, little shoot out there. But hey, listen, listen. I got I to gotta share this with you. Because I, I, we're going to be releasing it on July 1st. You now, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. I just, I'm excited about it. Hallelujah. I have T-Mobile service. Amen. You can have an Android phone. Listen, Android phone with no service whatsoever. No T-Mobile, no nothing, nothing. Just a phone. Amen. And you can watch television on your phone about 35 channels with our antenna and don't cost you a dime. Amen. Listen. That means you don't even have to have you don't have to have T-Mobile. You have, you can, if, if, the reason why we're doing this is because there's a lot of people right now that can't afford anything. Amen. Right? And all you need to do is get an old, cheap Android phone, yep. and you can watch television on your phone for nothing. Amen. That's Amen. a little. Amen. That, that's just a small commercial. Amen. Yeah. The Lord let me do that, so I, uh, I didn't have, a, I didn't have a, a, a check there. Amen. <laughs> now, again, the Holy Spirit was was Jesus' connection to his power source, to his Father, and to his assignment. So I want you to stop, and I want you to look at each and every one of us. Each and every one of us is a, is a person who has been designed by God to complete the mission. Remember, we talked about several weeks ago, we talked about what is the mission. The mission was back there in the Garden of Eden. That mission was to be fruitful, to multiply and subdue. That is the mission. That was the mission of Adam and Eve back there in the Garden of Eden. That mission has not changed. It's the same mission today. But the question ends up being is, how can you be fruitful, multiply, and subdue without Wi-Fi, without the power source? If you do not have the power source, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, if you do now, now, I'm going to step back because I'm going to use Wi-Fi in the same situation. You may go to some place and they may not have a good connection. So what happens is you're in and out on your phone. You don't have a good connection. Amen? You have it, but not a good connection. Amen? So Jesus had a good connection. And what the Father is saying to us today is, I want you to have that same connection, that same power source, that unlimited power source. And we can have that if we are willing to keep moving around until we find out where all of a sudden, okay, here it is. Now, once we have it, guess what? You're not going to go wandering around. What you're going to do is you're going to stand there and you're going to complete your call or do whatever you need to do because you're going to stand right there. And that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to do is to stay in our lane. Stay in that lane that He's called us to do. When we stay in our lane, what happens is we have complete Wi-Fi access. The power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So we go over to John 5 and 19. It says, Then answered Jesus to them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself. Amen. Amen. Let me stop it right there. Joe, you can do nothing of yourself without the Holy Spirit. Jay, you can do nothing. Skip, nothing. Bleak, nothing. 
done nothing, nothing. You can do nothing. Jesus says it. He says, I can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Period. End of conversation. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I can do nothing of myself, but what he sees the Father do, for what things soever he does, these also do it the do the Son likewise. He replicates what his Father is doing. That's why when the scripture says that we can bind on earth, we can bind in heaven. Whatever is loose on earth is loosed in heaven. There is a power in us that has the same capability, the same capability that Jesus had, that Holy Spirit without limit, we have that and we have the capability right here inside of us. Amen. So here's the question. If you had to go back in time, let's go back several, 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 several hundred years. Let's put it that way. Let's go back several thousand years. You had to go back, and you could only take one thing with you. <laughs> see that? That's exactly, see that? Yeah, okay, yes, yeah, see, now I'll put his phone up. I'll take the phone back. The problem is, no Wi-Fi, no connection. Okay, I'll take a gun. At least I take a gun, I can protect what happens when you run out of books. See, you can go today and you can look at every possible thing. Every possible thing that you would say, okay, what would I take back? If God says to you right now, I'm taking you back a couple thousand years, you can take anything today, what would you take back? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's all in all. He's everything. That is how important and how powerful the Holy Spirit is in our life. There is absolutely nothing here today that we absolutely need other than him first and foremost. Amen. Hallelujah. So when Jesus came to earth, he left the powerful society, the kingdom of God. And he only had one tool to navigate. And that was the Holy Spirit. He came to earth. Here, and I, and I shared this before, and I'll share the story real quick. A little boy in his backyard, a new place that just moved in, and there's a creek that's gone back and forth and stuff and everything, and he's by himself, and he goes back there, and all of a sudden he looks down, and there's a stick uh, on this, on this, over this little creek, and he sees all these ants crawling across, over and on, going across. He's looking down, he's looking, and some of them are falling off and going down the water. And he started feeling bad because he said, like, oh, man, that, that could be a family member. And it, I, I, how, how am I going to get them till they all understand? And so he gets down. Stay on the stick. <laughs> and he shouts out. He shouts, stay on the stick. And they keep falling off. They keep falling off. He gets another stick and puts it on the side. And they start getting a little bit better, but they keep falling off. And he tries everything. And he says, how am I going to get them to understand? I know. I'll become an ant. That's what Jesus did. For centuries and centuries, Father God was trying to get the human existence to listen to him. So finally he had to take his own kind and bring him down. As it says, in the beginning was in, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the world be, and in, in fourteen the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So when Jesus was here, he was like that ant. He was there here to do one thing. Show us how to stay on that course, how to stay on that stick, how to stay in that place where we can truly, truly, truly be safe. If we try to do it on our own, we will fall and we will stumble. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus had to come and do something. He had to come and fulfill prophecy. He had to come and live a perfect and sinful life. Understanding this, 
that you can only live in the obedience of God's word because of the Holy Spirit. Every time you are tempted, if you are not acknowledging that the Holy Spirit is acknowledging, is a small, still voice, amen? How many hear that small, still voice? That small, still voice that says, don't go there. And sometimes what happens is the voices of this world are so loud, so loud, that what happens is it distracts us from that small, still voice. But the scripture says, my sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Amen. So that voice of a stranger is nothing more but the world, is the enemy, and sometimes it's even us. Amen. Our voice of what we think we know we need to do instead of being led by the Spirit in every aspect. But pastor, I don't know how to do that. Well, you need to keep reading the Word over and over and over and over because guess what? And we're going to get into this, but I want you to understand this. Who wrote this? Amen. Yes, men jotted it down, but it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So everything in here is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, which is the wisdom of God. So if you want to know more about the Holy Spirit and how he operates and how he works in us, here is a manual that will knock your socks off. Amen. Amen. This right here. Hallelujah. So think about it. Jesus knew the power. It's not an atomic power. It's not an explosive power. But it's a universal creating power. Let me say that again. A universal creating power. Listen, enemy, Satan, and all of his cronies, the powers and spiritual wickedness, the rulers of darkness, and all that, do not have any creating power. Let me say that again. The enemy cannot create anything. The only one who can create is God himself. He has that universal creating power. So, what that means is, he now has placed that deep down inside of you, and now what happens is, each and every one of you, each and every one, has that universal creating power. Now, we can't create anything new because God, the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. It may change and deviate in the way it's done, but there's nothing new under the sun. So that means that God has placed in us that creative, universal power. Amen. Remember, if you go back to Genesis 1, it says, Let there be light, and there was light. All he did was spoke it into existence. Yes. Yes. He just spoke it into existence. That is the power. That's the universal creating power. Now, I want to step back just a second here because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And the bottom line as a being is we have universal creating power to bring evil upon someone or things. Amen. Yes. Because that creative power is in us. So we have to be careful of what we say and what we do. Because every time we do say something or do something because of the Holy Spirit, because of that universal creating power that's in us, we now create something, whether it's good or whether it's evil, that comes out of our mouth. That's why Jesus, and that's why the scripture says in John 21, 25, when it says, that, there are, that, that even in this world itself cannot contain the books of what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. So all that power dwelt in Jesus and was ready to be released to heal the sick, to drive out demons, to do all of that, to calm the natural worldly storm when he was in that boat and he said, Peace! He spoke it. He spoke it. Yeah. He said, peace, be still. And even the storm stopped. Yeah. That universal creating power. That's deep down inside of us. 
That is something that, you know what, I am learning more and more and more. I, I, I love going this past eight weeks. I'm learning more and more and more of understanding the, the, the realistic power that's inside of us that we can speak things into existence. If we are operating according to the Holy Spirit and giving Him and giving Him complete access to us, when we truly give over ourselves and just say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? How do you want to do this? You show me what you want to do instead of saying, well, I know how to do it because I did it before. You're already in the flesh and you're already operating according to the flesh because of what you think instead of being led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 11, 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask Him? Yes. Being Father's Day. Being Father's Day. I will do whatever I need to do, go out of my way for my daughters or for my wife or to those or I'll do it just because they're my kids. Yeah. How much more will the Father in heaven yeah. willing to give it to us if we just ask him? Amen. Ask him. Ask him. Holy Spirit, show me. Yes. Father God, show me. Remember, Jesus said, I do nothing until I see with the Father. And the Holy Spirit says that he only does what Jesus does. There's a, there's a relationship there that is impeccably honest, pure, and holy. Thank you, Jesus. So what are we talking about? We're talking about something called dunamis power. That's where the word dynamite comes from. You probably, you probably heard that from before. The Holy Spirit was given to accomplish everything that he had to do. So what about us? God gives us the mission. Be fruitful, multiply, and subdue. Subdue. Knowing that the Holy Spirit felt the greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So that we know that when we are led by the Spirit, that we know that no matter what's going on, Maybe in your family, maybe in your relationship, maybe at work, maybe whatever's going on. Do you realize when you walk in that room, you walk in that universal creating power, walking in that room, that you can literally say, peace, be still. Amen. Yes. Amen. And it has to line up according to the word of God. Well, what happens if everybody laughs? Don't worry about it. Amen. You just do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Don't go, don't go thinking like, oh, I'm all that, a box of chocolates and a Holy Spirit filled. Man, I'm going to go walking in there. And, hey, peace, be still. And everybody looks at you and goes, yeah, right. <laughs> but if you're led by the Spirit, I'll tell you, and I'll share a real, real quick story. I remember we were over at Walmart, or Walmart, Walnut, Walnut Street. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll get it out. We had the church over there, we were across the street, we were having Bible study and across the street. And we had a kids program going across over in, in the church area there. And they all came out outside the church, it was all done. There was probably maybe 25, maybe 30 youth and kids and stuff hanging out in front of the, in front of the cross. I didn't know, we were doing Bible study. Somebody came running in and said, uh, Pastor, they're about ready to start a fight or something. And I remember going out, and looking around, I stood in the middle, and I said, peace, be still. And everybody just stood there. I said, go home. And they all just went. It has nothing to do with me. Amen. Has everything to do with the universal creating power that's in you. That's in you. When you're led by the Spirit, you can, that, that particular point in time, I subdued, that was the enemy wanting to try to, Operate. I subdue. We have the capability and ability to do that. But we will never be able to complete the task without that power. In Acts 1, chapter 4, or chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Hallelujah. And being assembled together with them, 
commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, that you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not that many days hence. That's when that dunamis power came. That dunamis power, that power at Pentecost, that power was then released. That is why it is so important that when we come and we celebrate that day of Pentecost, we really should come and celebrate, as I said before, we celebrate the birth of Christ, we celebrate the death of Christ, but we never celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and gives us that which we need. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I want you to turn over to chapter, uh, verse, uh, chapter uh, Luke, chapter 11, verse 9 to 13. And he says, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh is open. Now I want to stop there. Because we use that scripture over and over and over. That maybe somebody needs something, you tell them. You say, look, you know what? You just got to keep asking, knocking, and seeking. You got to keep doing that. And sometimes people don't know how to do that. They don't know how to ask. They don't know how to seek. They don't know how to knock. They don't know how to enter in and come into that place that God has for us. But then it says in verse 11, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is his father, will he give him a stone? And if he asks for a fish, will the fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will it offer him a scorpion? No. The father is not going to do that. The father of a child is a, if, if, my, if my daughter would come to me and said, Dad, I need a loaf of bread. And I go out back and give her a rock and say, here. <laughs> We wouldn't do that. We would give them what they need. Again, I want you to realize and understand why are we going precept upon precept, line upon line as we're going here. Because I want you to realize and understand that the Holy Spirit is there for each and every one of us to truly, truly, truly ask. All we have to do is ask. And then it says, if ye then being evil... Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give you the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Why do we need the Holy Spirit for power? To complete the mission. Complete the mission all the way back to the Garden of Eden to be fruitful, to multiply, and subdue it. But there's also another reason why we need the Holy Spirit. Because we need something called truth. Amen. Amen. Truth, especially today, in this world. Yes. There is so much untruth. There is so much hypocrisy. There is so much going on. There is so much of the me generation that is just becoming more and more and more real. That what we need is truth. Truth. Remember it says in John 8, 31 and 33. Then it said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you shall be my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. Well, we have to realize that I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus said. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's all I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I am way. I am truth. And I am life. So when we see that, when Jesus is speaking, why do we need truth? Because when we know Jesus, we know truth. See, the world will give you anything that they want and everything they want to make you believe what you want to believe. But here is the truth. The truth is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't need more information. We need truth. Yes. You see, we get all this information that's coming, but what is truth? 
is what we need is truth. Every time you hear something, you better weigh it according to the truth or the word of God. How do you measure it? See, this is a plumb line. A plumb line. If you know how, how a construction worker works, when they start and they're ready to build a foundation, they put a plumb line, or now they have all the electronic stuff, but a plumb line so they can find the perfect, perfect place to start that's actually where they need to be. And that plumb line is so critical because if that plumb line's off, that whole building's off. Amen. Period. It's off. It's going to be crooked. Because what happens is if you're if you're a quarter of an inch off, and as you go down one one foot and another foot and another foot, that quarter inch goes to be a half inch, goes to be an inch. Next thing you know, if you're down there, you're about three inches, four inches off. Why? Because the plumb line was off. Our plumb line is right here. The Holy Spirit who inspired this word that is here already inside of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In John 16, 13, and 14, listen to it. It says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of who? Himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So, again, talking to, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, he is getting instructions from Father God. Let's put it that way. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but here, here is Father God, God who created everything, that has that universal creating power, the one that flung the stars in the skies, the one that knows everything about you, he knows every hair on your head, he knows everything about you, so if I want to get major, major information, I want to get it from the horse's mouth or from the main source. Amen. Who? God. Who's going to give you that? The Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the one who wrote what God wanted to show with us. Yeah. And he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and he's going to be in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So think about this. Think about ideas or visions, or dreams you may have, aspirations you may have. <coughs> I want you to kind of think about how many here, somewhere along your spiritual life, your spiritual life, not your worldly life, your spiritual life, that you feel God has spoken to you and you kind of have something in the back burner that you really, really want to do. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Now, who placed that there? What? Well, what happens is, so many times we start questioning, yeah, but God, I, I'm not capable of doing that. How am, I, how am I going to be able to do that? I don't have the resources. I don't, See, that's nothing more but the enemy trying to tell you that you are not capable of doing that which God has called you to do. And he's going to talk you right out of it until you really, really realize inside of you is that universal creating power to complete that task. Remember, faith is what moves God. Remember, without faith, it's impossible to please him. What moves him is faith. What moves him is getting up out of your chair and saying, you know what? I don't have the capability. I don't have the resources. I don't have anything. All I have is you, Holy Spirit, so you lead me and you guide me. There may be times that you might have to wait. There may be times that you might have to jump out instantaneously. But whatever it is, you better make sure that you do it. If not, that vision, that dream is going to be in your back mind for the rest of your life. And all of a sudden you realize, think about it, you may be the only one to complete that task. Amen. God's waiting for you. God's waiting for me. God's waiting for each of us to jump out. So I want you to think about this. When you're reading the Word of God, this is some interesting things as we, we get into here. When we come to our prayer, please don't just pick up the Word of God and just start reading.
because you know you have to read. Before you start reading, Holy Spirit, you wrote this. Holy Spirit, I know there's something here that I need to know and I need to understand. I need you to speak to my heart in how this word needs to be applied to my heart. And what happens is, remember, God said this. He says, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is just say, Holy Spirit, I need you to show me because I am not a theologian. I didn't go to seminary. I didn't understand, but all I know is you wrote this, so you translate it to me. Amen. And all of a sudden, what's going to happen if you just be still and let him speak to you, you're going to get a little unction deep down inside, and you're going to go, oh, wow. Never really thought about that. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit reveals to me. You know, there's times I may be, I may be, and I share it over and over and over. I may be driving down the road, all of a sudden this thought will come in my mind that just comes out of nowhere. And it's glorifying God and it's honoring God, so it must be the Holy Spirit because it's not me. And I know it's not the enemy saying, hey, I'm going to glorify God today. Right. So I listen and see what the Holy Spirit has. And sometimes it's so whacked out that you go, okay, I jot it down and I just keep praying over it and seeking the Lord and seeing what he wants to do with what he wants to do. See, the truth will set you free. Amen. The truth will set you free. The word of God, but truth, him. See, there is a lot of false doctrines out there. There's a lot of man's beliefs. And there's tons and tons and tons of books on the shelf. Yes, sir. But I don't know about anybody here, but I put my trust here. Amen. Amen. Because I know this is truth. Absolutely. I know this is real. I know it's alive. I know it speaks to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In John 14, 26 and 27. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, that he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, that whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave unto you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, Neither let it be afraid. Amen. He's saying there, right there. He's saying there, John is saying in the scriptures. He's saying, I've given you the Holy Spirit. He, he will bring it to remembrance. Amen. How many here can raise your hand and say, I know how to make a shoe fly pie? <laughs> One. All right, we got one. You're, you're now the shoe fly pie man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> but you should know how to do it because it's just a shoe fly pie, right? No, because you've never learned how to do it. You've never read the instructions. If you've never read the instructions, how many here can truly make something that you've made over and over because you read it and you've done it and you can do it over and over and over. But if you've never done it before and you never read the instruction, you'll never be able to do it. It's just like the Word of God. See, the Holy Spirit can't bring to remembrance to you if you've never read the recipe. Amen. If you've never read the recipe, if you don't know what the Holy Spirit can do and what God can do, what Jesus Christ has already done, if you don't know that, if you don't understand that, you can't stand in that universal creating power because you don't, he's not going to bring anything to remembrance. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. We all need help in that area. We all need help in that area because it's so easy to be able to just read a couple verses that I did my job for today. See, the bottom line ends up being is 
This is the connection we have with the Heavenly Father. This is the connection we have. This is the Holy Spirit who literally is willing to just download and download and download and down. I was not born out of my mother's womb with all this stuff. It took time. It took perseverance. Just like many of us in here. How do we know what we have? How do we know what the Word of God says? Because I've read it and I've read it and I've read it and I've read it and then I can apply it. I can speak it and I can and, and believe that God is going to do what God is going to do. Hallelujah. You see, He illuminates the truth. He'll guide us, He'll encourage us and He'll give us the supernatural insight. And He will also give us discernment with the people that are around us and the people who are maybe against us. Yes. He will be able to share that because he understands. It's the voice. It's that small, still voice inside. So today, consider the deeper relationship with the one you can't see. A deeper relationship with the one you can't see. But he sees everything. Everything we do. Everything he knows and he knows the desires of our heart. Yes. Yes, he inspired men to write his story. The father, the son. Yes. And he is that dude of his power from on high. Yes. In John 16, 13, as I close out, and it says... And he will show you things to come. If you want to know what God has for us, we need to be in tune with the Spirit of God. He will show you, he will lead you, and he will guide you. You have a choice today. And that choice today is to listen. That choice today is to hear. That choice today is to say, okay, I get it. Now I have to have a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit who teaches us, leads me, and guides me. Why do I need to listen to that voice? I have a seven-minute video I want you to watch, and I want you to watch it very carefully. Listen to the voice? Yeah. I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane. A pastor came up and he said, listen, I can save you money. I said, how's that? He said, I flew a small airplane up here. And I fly a small airplane. And I can take you in my little airplane and you can save your ticket. And this did not sound, I said, gee, thank you so very, very much. But I've got this ticket. We'll just make our way on home, me and this other lawyer with me. He said, no, 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 you got to do it, you got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, okay. Well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane, and I looked at it. And I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He's on the left front. I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started it up, and it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we're good. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway. The plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing. And it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. We started climbing, and we flew by, I believe, three, four minutes. And something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me and he said, we're going in the clouds and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, clouds make you do what? <laughs> now, it's been cloudy all day. <laughs> clouds and you can't see anything. And he looks at me and his eyes roll back in his head. And he starts mumbling and he passes out. He passed out. So I grabbed him and I shook him and I said, come on, you've got to wake up so I can kill you. <laughs> my friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? And I said, there's a very good chance of being yes. He said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio right there and I handed him the microphone and I said, start asking for help. 
So he's in the back seat reaching up, and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. Don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? And I said, good. I said, no, we don't know nothing. Tell him, we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot, and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? I said, tell him that's correct. Now, you've got to understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm going to do is start circling so I don't lose you. Because I'll fly out of range of your radio and you won't have me anymore. And he said, I'm going to get Anchorage Emergency for you. And Anchorage Emergency will be the people that can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came on and said, we understand you have a passed out pilot. And those of you do not know how to fly that plane. We said, that's right. They said, well, the first thing we got to do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you've got to promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. When you can't see anything, you have no idea how disorientated you become. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now hear me clear. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're going to crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said... I have to follow your voice. Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And you understand, without God's voice, you have nothing. Nothing. Finally, he got his turn. And he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage. And there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. You're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm, just my voice. And he said, if you start watching the storm, you will die. But I'll take you through. Now, because they cleared all the traffic, several pilots, those nighttime freighters, those 747s, started talking to us. They said, we're praying for you, Ben. You're going to make it. But listen to the voice. That's the key. They said, trust the voice. Do you realize your head is full of voices? And everybody in this world wants to talk to you. And everybody wants to be the controlling voice. And God says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Finally, we went through the worst of the weather, but there was still more. And then the voice came back and he said, now, I'm going to line you up. He said, I'm going to bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights, and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying is, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice, and they follow me. Yeah. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw a cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed it seven times. <laughs> Finally, it all came to a stop, and the minute we stopped, the pilot woke up. <laughs> I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even though they can't see me. But they get the voices in their head and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room at about four in the morning. I knock at my door. I open the door and a man was standing there. He said, hello, David. He said, you're the voice. You're the one who got me home. He said, I am. Do you understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, you were the voice. You're the voice that brought me home. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, your head's full of voices. And then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord
Lord saying, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. And I'll take you through. Tonight you have a God who has promised to take you through. A living sacrifice holy. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. Grab the hand of somebody in there. I want you to turn to somebody to the right and somebody to the left. I want you to look at them right in the eye. I say, please, please, listen to the voice. That voice will get us home. Let's pray. Father, thank you today, Lord, for your awesomeness. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit who leads us, guides us, that in the midst of the storm, he knows the way out. That when we're struggling, feeling lonely, and nobody even cares. The Bible says that he cares for us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that everything we need is found in you. Yes, Lord. Father, even as we watched this video, Lord, these men were basically all they knew. They're about to die. Yeah. But they had to listen to the voice. That small, still voice that got them home. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you're going to do. And Father, forgive us, Lord, for not listening, for letting the world interfere with the static yes. that we can't hear the radio signal clearly from you. That, Lord, we have to learn to shut out the interference so that we can hear your voice. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you're doing and all you're going to do. Father, continue, Lord God, to strengthen us as we move forward. And Father, we thank you, Lord, this day for an opportunity, Lord God, to give up our tithes and our offerings. That, Lord, as we come, Lord, the first day of the week, Lord, to be obedient to your voice, be obedient to what you want us to do. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the many gifts that are represented here in this building. We thank you, Lord, for the ministries and all of the, all of the talents, Lord God, and the, and the spiritual gift that you've given us. Father, help us to use it in a greater way. Help us to realize that, Lord, that there's a universal creating power inside of us. And that, Lord God, that we can, Lord God, overcome because you already overcome the world. So, Father, be with each and every one of us, Lord, as we leave this place. Father, we go in peace. And we go to serve you and you alone. And Father, we give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Serve the Lord. There's plenty of donuts and still some coffee. So please, if you're not going to eat, take one home with you. Because <laughs> they ain't going home to my house. They ain't going to mine either. Thank you There are there are little little men's Father's Day things on the back table with the uh, with the uh, donuts. So it's like you grab one and grab a donut. <laughs> Uh, 